Hello, uh, my name is Cesar Pereira. I'm the chair of the uh, Chartered Institute of Arbitrators Brazil branch, and I'm very happy uh, to welcome you all here today uh, for our uh, open online meeting uh, with and Ryan Robertson and Catherine Dixon. Uh, these are our, our keynote speakers uh, this, this evening. And, um, and, and together, uh, we will uh, discuss uh, some issues regarding the interplay between uh, the, the, the roles of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators and arbitral institutions and academia in developing uh, ADR in in brazil and in south uh, south america in in general um before we before we get uh, started i i would i would just like to um introduce our two keynote speakers and ryan robertson uh is um a chartered arbitrator a fellow of the chartered institute partner at lock and lord in houston based in houston but everywhere right and uh, maybe not if, uh, in person everywhere as much as uh, it would be uh, nice, but uh, everywhere, at least remotely. Uh, and, um, and she is the uh, uh, president for uh, 2021 of the Chartered, in Chartered Institute of Arbitrators uh, Worldwide. And uh, Catherine Dixon uh, um, is the director general of uh, the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators uh, uh, based in, in London. Uh, from the uh, Chartered Institute headquarters. Um, the, the way this is going to be structured uh, tonight is uh, we will have um, uh, uh, about half an hour uh, discussion with some introductory remarks by Anne and, and Catherine uh, now. In, uh, in, and afterwards, we will move into two breakout rooms where uh, Anne in, in one room and Catherine in, in the other uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, with um, several uh, of our fellows and our friends uh, who represent uh, arbitrary institutions and um, in, in, in academic uh, institutions uh, as well. Um, we'll discuss the, the issues that inspire us today uh, with regard to, this, to the Chartered Institute and institutional arbitration. And, and those, uh, those breakout rooms will be moderated by two of our uh, Brazilian fellows, uh, breakout room by uh, Frederico Singaraja, who is a fellow uh, and a barrister in London at Hardwick, and uh, um, uh, breakout room number two, round table two, will be moderated by Cristina Mastrobono, uh, who is also a fellow of the Brazil branch, a former state attorney in Sao Paulo, now an independent arbitrator, in the director of communications of the Brazil branch. And uh, afterwards, we come back here to this main room, main session, and uh, you will be uh, then uh, led by uh, Tonico Monteiro da Silva, uh, who is also a fellow, a partner at uh, Elio Batista, and uh, director of education of the uh, Brazil branch. And, um, uh, well, uh, Federico and uh, Christina uh, will introduce our panelists for each of the roundtables, and so I will uh, leave that to them. But uh, I, I just wanted to make a very brief remark here about the fact that today, afterwards, after this session here, uh, we will have our annual general meeting of the Brazil branch. And um, so this is, in a way, uh, a, a a moment uh, to think about what we did uh, over the past year. Uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a, an obvious understatement to say it was a difficult year for for everyone. Um, but it was a challenging year, and it was a year of a, with a lot of learning. And uh, but but I think uh, probably everybody would agree that one of our main accomplishments here at the Brazil branch was the accelerated uh, route to fellowship that we were able to do online in August um, under the direction of Anne uh, and uh, with the uh, invaluable uh, uh, organizational work of Tonico. And um, in that ARF, 
allowed us to have many of uh, you here uh, today as new fellows of the of the Brazil branch. And uh, the, this, uh, this talk that we will have today is a good illustration of the fact that uh, now uh, the Brazil branch uh, is comprised of uh, practitioners and um, scholars and, 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 and uh, uh, representatives of the arbitration community in Brazil uh, that cover a wide range of uh, arbitral institutions. Uh, of course, we are still missing here uh, at least Carolina and Patricia, right, and uh, and Manuel, and we hope to have them with us uh, soon. Um, but we, uh, uh, the Brazil branch, uh, has been able uh, to uh, cover uh, a, a wide uh, range of arbitrary institutions in Brazil, and that's uh, one of the. Uh, that's one of one of the reasons why we are able to have this meeting today with so many friends from so many different institutions uh, with different characteristics uh, that are able to share their experiences here today. And also, uh, one thing, one very good thing that the ARF we did last year uh, brought about was a much closer connection with our uh, fellows from other South American countries. And we have here with us Blanca. Uh, Christian, Christian is Peruvian, but uh, in a great deal, also Brazilian. Uh, we have uh, Jennifer here from from uh, Uruguay, and, um, and and we we hope that our next ARFs uh, will have uh, ever more uh, a, a presence, of, a greater presence from uh, 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 um, practitioners coming from other South American countries, so so that we we have in uh, really um, a, a, a wide representation of the Chartered Institute uh, in South America as well. So uh, without um, any, any without taking any more time from our speakers, I would just like to uh, say one last thing. Uh, you know, we are live streaming on YouTube, uh, but when we move to the round tables, uh, that's not going to be possible anymore. This is going to be recorded. It's going to be available later, but it cannot be live streamed for some technical reason. So uh, I would recommend that if you are following us on YouTube only, uh, just check the chat box there, um, our, our uh, uh, friend here, Thais, has um, inserted there some information about how you can uh, join our Zoom meeting. And I would recommend that you do that so that you can follow the uh, breakout rooms uh, more more perfectly. Uh, and I guess that's it. Uh, oh, one more <laughs> very, very last thing. Uh, we will have another ARF in N has very kindly and graciously accepted to direct it again. And so we will have it uh, on, in October. Uh, that's going to be on October the 4th through the 8th. And uh, well, you will see that uh, on social media and we will uh, make sure that to promote that very uh, intensively. But uh, you are all already invited, if you're not a fellow yet, to uh, take the accelerated uh, route to fellowship in October. Okay, so um, with that, uh, thank you again. And uh, Anne, I would like to. Sorry, uh, Cesar, I, to just wanted, I just wanted to yeah. say um, I'm actually on round table two and Christine on round table one. Uh, okay, just in sorry. Case want uh, got you mixed up then. No okay. problem. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you know what you know where you're supposed to be. And uh, so don't, don't, don't pay attention to me on that, at least. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Ren, uh, sorry, uh, the, the floor is yours. Many thanks, Caesar. It's a real pleasure to be part of today's program, and I'm very grateful to you and everyone at the branch for organizing this event. And I'm also delighted that we're joined by guests from such a wide range of prestigious arbitral institutions. The question we're here to explore today is very important to me personally and touches on all the key themes of my presidency. And that is, how can the Chartered Institute and arbitral institutions in Brazil, 
and around the world work together for mutual advantage. In our view, we share fundamental interest with institutional arbitration. And in fact, there are innumerable opportunities to collaborate and build a symbiotic relationship with arbitral institutions. From the confidence that the Chartered Institute accreditation can provide to developing shared thought leadership on sustainability challenges, from working together to better meet the needs of our end users to improving diversity and inclusion in the profession. It will be a pleasure to discuss each of these ideas with our guests today. My presidential term is taking place in circumstances which a year ago I could never have imagined. Since becoming president, I've spoken at events in Singapore, Vienna, South America, the UK, and many more places, all without leaving my home in Texas. In fact, this morning, at the early hour of 4 a.m., I was speaking in Singapore. It is a testament to the immense changes we've seen in the way we work over the past year and the incredible ability of our profession to evolve and to adapt in the change in the face of unprecedented challenges. The Chartered Institute has also sought to play a leading role in this story of resilience. In March of last year, we developed our new guidance note on remote proceedings to equip practitioners with practical and professional advice so that they could quickly shift to a world in which in-person contact is not permitted. I know that some of those present today made invaluable contributions to the delivery of that guidance note and the praise it has received around the globe reflects the international expertise that went into its development. The Chartered Institute was also a founding institution of the Virtual Arbitrations website initiative, an online hub showcasing best practices and technological adaptations in the arbitration community. And in the delivery of our own services, we quickly moved towards an online model. Many of our courses have been successfully moved online, as have our conferences. And we are, of course, looking forward to the day when we can all once again meet in person. Nonetheless, it has always been said, and it is certainly true in this past year, that necessity is the mother of invention. And we hope that many of the positive lessons we've learned continue to be applied long after this pandemic is over. As I've mentioned, it's our sincere hope that we make maximum use of the opportunities we have for collaboration and partnership with arbitral institutions. I know that Catherine is going to share some of her thoughts on how this can be achieved and on the unique value that the Chartered Institute and the arbitral institutions can deliver for one another. In this, we are developing a, division, a vision of how we can cooperate to meet the challenges of the future. In anticipation of that, I wanted to make some brief remarks on what we perceive to be the most important challenges. The first is environmental sustainability. In a world in which the climate crisis and concerns about sustainability are high on the political and social agenda, it is imperative that our profession carefully consider how we play our role in reducing our carbon footprint. Initiatives such as the Greener Arbitrations Campaign, have demonstrated the impact that arbitration has on the environment and importantly, the practical steps that we can take to mitigate it. What's more, these adaptations are not only about helping the environment, but if done properly, they can be part of a co comprehensive strategy for making our services more efficient, modernizing our working practices and ultimately better meeting the needs of end users, which leads to the next, meeting the needs of business. In an increasingly complex world, parties are naturally demanding greater flexibility and choice in how they manage and resolve their disputes. This requires our profession to innovate, focusing on outcomes rather than processes. In practice, this can mean many different things. 
from facilitating hybrid procedures where appropriate to offering a wider range of mechanisms for parties to choose from. In short, we must put dispute resolution at the heart of business and business at the heart of dispute resolution. And then of course, there is the important question of how do we widen access? We must create a framework which improves access for everyone regardless of their background. We are conscious of the challenges we continue to face in terms of diversity and inclusion in spite of some genuine process having been made. The Institute is committed to playing its part in delivering opportunities for aspiring practitioners. And I know that many arbitral institutions are as well, especially through expedited or lower value procedures. We believe that the Chartered Institute's accreditation can underpin those efforts by providing confidence to those who have, in, who have attained Chartered Institute membership. The rigor of our admissions, admissions process and the discipline of our code of ethics embody insurance and clarity for end users and arbitral institutions alike. These are what we believe to be key challenges and indeed opportunities for our organizations as we look towards the future. No doubt our guests today will have their own perspectives on these and their own views on how they can be met. I personally am very excited for the opportunity to discuss them in real depth. Now I am pleased to hand over to our Director General, Catherine Dixon, who will expand on what the Institute can offer the world of institutional arbitration. Catherine. Thanks, Anne. And may I say, it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to address you all today. Um, since it was formed in September 2019, CIARB's Brazil branch has been incredibly active. And today is yet another example of the valuable engagement on genuinely relevant issues with real implications for our members. I'm very grateful to Cesar and to everyone at the branch for organizing this event. And I'm very much looking forward to participating in what promises to be an invigorating panel discussion. As a center of excellence for dispute resolvers worldwide, CIRB is committed to working closely with arbitral institutions to continually develop and uphold the highest standards in arbitration and ADR. Our training and accreditation provide a mark of excellence for the profession and can promote greater use of arbitration and ADR by underpinning market confidence in neutrals. It's true to say that many of our members are prominent on the lists of arbitrators, adjudicators, and mediators at institutions around the world. As such, CIRB and arbitral institutions can benefit from a mutually advantageous and symbiotic relationship. Brazil remains an active environment for arbitration. It was uh, now it was more than 20 years since the U New York Convention was ratified, and the Brazilian Arbitration Act is uh, conducive to a vibrant and effective functioning of arbitration, and the country boosts a range of renowned arbitral institutions, many of which I'm pleased are represented during the panel discussions today. Indeed, the rules of arbitration of CAM CCBC, the Center of Arbitration and Mediation of Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce, were used for the 2017 Bismuth in Vienna. The latest figures for 2019 show that there were 289 arbitral proceedings commenced with major arbitral institutions in Brazil, representing over 60 billion US dollars. In light of our mission to promote the greater use of non-court mechanisms for resolving disputes, we're encouraged to see a high demand for arbitration and a high volume of cases being handled by arbitral institutions. CIRB's strategic aims are to globally promote the constructive resolution of disputes, be a global inclusive thought leader, and develop and support an inclusive global community of diverse dispute resolvers. 
In delivering on our strategic aims, we recognise the opportunities that are available to work more intelligently with arbitral institutions. As I mentioned, there is a naturally symbiotic relationship available to be cultivated in three key areas. Firstly, training and accreditation. CIAB's post nominals represent the highest standards in dispute uh, re resolution and can be useful tools for arbitral institutions seeking to communicate the professional excellence of arbitrators and mediators on their lists. Many institutions around the world already recognize CIAB's accreditation as eligibility requirement to join their panels. Notably in Singapore, uh, International Arbitration Center, which I'm pleased is represented here today. We welcome the opportunity to work more closely with arbitral institutions here in Brazil to develop a similar relationship. Secondly, practice guidelines and thought leadership. One of our strategic priorities is to, uh, is to be a global inclusive thought leader for the management and resolution of disputes. By the same token, arbitral institutions are real powerhouses of knowledge, expertise, and understanding of local and regional issues and trends. CIAB can collaborate with arbitral institutions in Brazil to develop and promote our professional practice guidelines and develop thought leadership on live issues affecting the profession, much of which we did with our guidance note on remote proceedings, which we released in April of last year. Thirdly, equality, diversity, and inclusion. Both CIAB and arbitral institutions have a vested interest in ensuring that we build a profession in which everyone can thrive on merit, regardless of their background. Through working together on training and education courses and developing opportunities for new arbitrators to gain experience on smaller disputes, we can take a pragmatic um, approach with tangible acts, actions to achieve this. I hope we can expand on some of these proposals during the panel discussion, and I'm sure that our other contributors will have many inspiring ideas of their own. So thank you again for inviting me here tonight. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Anne. Uh, it's interesting that uh, Anne mentioned the guidance note uh, on remote hearings, because uh, precisely one year ago, uh, almost precisely on the 29th of April last year, uh, we had a similar meeting prior to our AGM in, uh, in which we were discussing exactly the guidance notes and Carolina uh, Morengi, who was uh, involved in the preparation of, of those notes, was also uh, uh, one, of the, one of the speakers. And, I, and um, I, I'd like to, just to, before we go to the roundtables, I'd just like to, uh, to uh, pick up on something that Catherine just mentioned. Uh, um, we have in Brazil a very clear char characteristic uh, in terms of the arbit arbitration market, which is um, clear leadership of the arbitral institutions and the uh, and, uh, and a clear predominance of arbitral of, of institutional arbitration over ad hoc arbitration. And and the arbitral institutions have um, have had in these twenty some odd years since the enactment of the Brazilian Arbitration Act, um, a, a, a very distinct role in promoting ADR, much like the Chartered Institute. In a, so in that regard, uh, they, uh, the arbitral institutions in Brazil and CIR share um, not only values and, and goals, but share even uh, a type of methodology, uh, the, the idea of uh, promoting uh, events of uh, 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 offering training uh, and um, so uh, uh, um, creating uh, an environment uh, that is uh, more more favorable uh, to the uh, to a sustainable development of uh, ADR in, in Brazil and uh, arbitrary institutions have taken that taken up that role uh, in in Brazil. And, and, I, and I'm sure now uh, we will have much to collaborate on uh, uh, between the Chartered Institute and arbitral institutions in, in Brazil as we move uh, forward in, uh, in an increasingly more developed um, um, uh, environment for ADR uh, here in, in, in South America in general. 
Uh, well, thank you again, Anne and, and Catherine. And now, uh, Thais, um, I would suggest we start moving to the roundtables. And now we, uh, now we know exactly that uh, Christina is on roundtable one and Federico on roundtable two, right?